Good morning. I wanted to give you guys a quick video on the remote collar so that you know how to use it when it arrives. Um, this is your remote and clearly the collar um, would be the piece with the strap in the box. I don't mean to be um, silly about that, just clarifying. If you'll start with the red dot that you find on the remote, you will see a red dot just like it on the collar box. When you touch these two red dots together, they are magnets and will turn the collar on and the collar off. So red dot to red dot powers on or off the collar okay you have to turn the remote on and off separately from the collar and that's this big button on the back that says on off and light okay it's got the L in it so when I press and hold press and hold the big button on the back it turns my remote off so again big button on the back Press and hold, and I've turned the remote on, okay? The, little, the same button with the L in it, if I give a quick tap to, will turn a light on the collar. It'll start with a strobe light. Another quick tap of this same button will turn it solid, and a third quick tap will turn the light off. So this button is multi-purpose, press and hold for power, quick taps for the light. The little button on the back, MC, and boy is mine dirty, MC, gives us the mode that the collar's in. So do you see that little C next to the five? We're in continuous mode. If I tap that little button on the back, I start cycling through the modes of the collar. Okay, so M stands for momentary, meaning if I press and hold the buttons, the stem buttons, I'll get one-tenth of one second of a correction, no matter how long I hold the button down. Continuous stands for, I'm sorry, C stands for continuous, which means if I press and hold the button, it will stem as long as I'm holding the button up to 10 seconds and then it will max itself out so this gives me more flexibility to choose am I going to give a quick tap maybe even a couple of taps if I wanted to or a press and hold and linger in how long I give that stem and there will be times that we linger right on the recall if you're not if you are not coming to me when I call you, I'm gonna press and hold and start ticking the dial up point by point by point by point until you actually step back towards me. So in the teaching phase, they start moving pretty quickly, but there's going to come the test, right? The challenge, the do you really mean this? Can you really enforce this? So we want you to always stay in continuous mode which gives you more flexibility to tap or to press and hold and linger through that stem, okay? All right, so um, Poppy is actually wearing her collar and this is her remote. So just gonna cover a couple more things about this and then show you the difference between the two dogs. So this is your antenna. Generally speaking, we have a half mile range so once you've really started conditioning your dog and they start to understand the meaning, we may or may not move to off-leash training, but certainly from across the house or across the yard, at those times when they're not leashed up, you have enough range to give them the same types of communication you would in any other circumstance. Your dial, simply changes our level. The dial has a lock feature. So if I press and hold, if I press that in and hold, you see the 1D stop blinking? 
if I press and hold it again, I've unlocked it. What that means is, sorry, we're getting a shadow here. So we're not blinking. So even though I'm spinning the dial, the level's not changing because I've locked it to prevent it from spinning in my pocket. A design flaw about this is though, you see, I left it at 19 when I unlocked it. We were on nine or so and unlocked, it was a much higher number. So just be aware if you're locking your buttons that it may in fact have spun when you put it in your pocket or your purse or things of that nature. And when you unlock it, always double check where it landed, okay? The two buttons on the uh, left-hand side of the collar marked S are your stem buttons. So for a two dog unit, this is gonna function a little bit differently. This is dog one and this is dog two. So the straps will come one black and one red so that it's easier to remember. Dog one, dog two. Black strap, red strap. If you change those straps at some point in the future, you need to remember to um, keep that in mind, which is which. <clears throat> so this will give you the correction level, and I don't want to get poppy. If you press the correction on the stem, it's going to the black dog, red goes to the red dog. You cannot correct both dogs simultaneously. It is one button or the other, okay? So keep that in mind when you're working the two of them. If they are getting into a squabble, put the remote down and deal with the squabble. The idea of corrections for this is to interrupt behaviors early and at a level sufficient enough that they're like, I gotcha, I understand, and that we've done enough teaching to have clarity about um, what these buttons mean. But it is not intended to be something that would break up a fight, okay? <clears throat> The T button, so when I hold this, I'm usually holding it like this. The T button at my thumb, for you guys with a two dog collar, when you tap that button, oops, sorry, Poppy. Let me take hers off so I can show you. You stay. So when I tap, when I tap the T button, see this little marker show up there? That little odd looking seven, backwards seven. That's putting your collar in vibrate mode, right? Now these stem buttons, instead of sending the stem level, sends a vibration. It'll send a vibration, okay? So if you have pressed that and you see, you see that symbol and you wanna get back to stem level, just press it again and it'll put you back in the numeric um, dial so that you can start giving stem levels. <clears throat> when you have a two dog system, right? If you wanna issue a boost, right? So by default, the boost is set to plus five. Instructions will be in your book to show you how to reprogram the boost level. You can make it plus one and up to plus 60, which I have done for some dogs in highly arousing scenarios. But for most of what we're doing, plus a few points is sufficient to mark that you've made a mistake. We need to give a correction level versus a working level and offer something more, um, a little firmer, right? So, if you have a two dog system, the way you're going to boost is a little bit different than the single dog systems. So if I want to boost black dog, I press the black button and I add the red. Press the black and add the red. If I want to boost the red dog, I press the red button and add the black. Press the red button and add the black. So it's a double you got a boop boop to get both of them right 
I want you to not dress your dogs <laughs> and practice some of this stuff. Think about I'm um, boosting whichever dog. Hey, give me just one second. Okay, no I'm boosting whichever dog um, is is the black and whichever one is the red. And keep that in mind, okay? And then when you're working dog A, don't have dog B dressed. In case you accidentally hit the button, you don't give uh, a correction to a dog that's in his crate doing absolutely nothing wrong, right? So get your muscle memory of all of this stuff. Um, um, get your muscle memory going before you really start trying to work them in pairs. And then the final thing, this is your charging port. There's one just like it on the collar. When they are closed up properly, they are waterproof. Your remote will float. Um, if you do take them out in the rain, be sure to take everything off, get the dog dry, get the remote dry before you put things back on them because it will cause those pressure sores we've talked about, those moisture sores, and we don't want those things to happen. Um, and remember, collar goes on in the morning. If you're going to be gone for a few hours, pull them off. Unless you have an issue when you arrive home and you need to work on getting them seated in the crate or getting their arousal under control, stopping the jumping. For a few days, it would be okay to leave that on um, while you're gone. They come off at bedtime unless you are working on a overnight issue with crate arousal and that sort of thing. And um, I want you to move it from side to side each day. So think this area of the ear into somewhere in this area and you can go a little higher or lower this way never square on the back and never square on the trachea um, but move it side to side each day to help avoid those pressure sores and if you have left it on um, the day like you've gone out for a really long day or you've left it on in the crate think about somewhere around midday or at some point in the day moving it to the other side just to prevent those pressure sores. If you're gonna leave it on overnight, swap it from to the other side before you go to bed and that sort of thing. But <clears throat> key points to remember are how to change the vibrate and how to boost, right? So the black dog and red dog's easy, but you've gotta press and add or press and add to get a boost level for your dog. Read the e-collar guide and read the article that I sent in the link called Capping versus Chasing is out on my blog because I want you to start figuring out not just the working level, but what level will change an aroused behavior. And that may vary depending on the level of arousal. And so we practice working level. We get that really consistent, really primed, really clear and then as they should start moving into a mastery phase, we're gonna correct them for not doing what they know how to do. The consequences will get firmer to say, we're not dancing around this. This is not negotiable. When I tell you to sit, I meant it. When I tell you to come, you're gonna show up. And so we move out of, and this takes a few days, right? We move out of teaching skills into proofing skills with a little bit of correction and then into mastery that says if you miss it, it's going to be um, far more than your working level because I don't want you to keep making these mistakes you need to learn to do them right the first time so the consequences get higher so let me know if you have any questions about this read the manual that comes in the book read it read it read it and practice without it being attached, right? Put this in your hand, watch the lights on the collar as you're pressing the buttons and see what's happening um, to make sure that your muscle memory is starting to kick in and that you understand what you need to do so that in the moment, you're better aware of that. And then the more you practice with your dogs, the better. Call me if you need me. Bye-bye.